so my name's Jared. I'm a product manager at Frame. I, I work heavily with Autodesk, and uh, I've been getting this question a lot. Uh, I'm up uh, working with the hands-on training labs, and people are asking, like, hey, I noticed the Frame logos on everything. What exactly are you guys doing with Autodesk here at uh, Autodesk University? So. Uh, for those that don't know who we are, uh, we are Frame. We're a, a secure cloud platform for delivering Windows applications and workflows in the cloud. We're a multi-cloud solution. The idea here being take your Windows application, move them to the Frame, and then it doesn't matter where you are in the world as long as you have an internet connection and a browser, you have access to your applications and your data. So we've, we've had a long history with Autodesk. Uh, I've been at Frame for a little over th uh, three years now. We've done a lot of stuff with them. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see we've been talking to them. Uh, for anybody that's an AutoCAD, Revit, or Inventor user, you know AutoCAD has a Autodesk has a pretty big um, early access beta program. You have to download a huge download. I think it's 60, 70 gigabytes. You got to install it on the machine that you both have to do work on and try the new version. Now with Frame, you can actually log into the Autodesk website, go to the beta website, and actually run the application inside the cloud. That means you don't have to download anything. You don't have to worry about it messing up the existing data. You can just use the applications easily. Second thing we've done with them, uh, we were part of the certification program uh, two years ago. So we are fully certified for AutoCAD, Revit, and Inventor. So that means uh, when you run these applications, you know that Autodesk has given it the thumbs up, that it performs well, it works the way it should, and gives you the best graphics possible. And then on the third side of things, we've also built a product specifically for Autodesk applications for architecture, engineering, and construction applications. We call it Frame for Enterprise. It has all the pieces that you need to connect your applications in the cloud. But this year, uh, we have a new part of our relationship, which is uh, the hands-on labs. So upstairs, there are seven training labs between 28 and 55 seats. And basically what they are is, uh, systems with all the applications necessary for the instructors to show people how to use the applications and the different workflows that they might use. So it's an interesting challenge. Uh, about six months ago, this is the challenge that the Autodesk guys came to me with. First, there's going to be hundreds of sessions. Okay, not a big deal, but what does a session mean? It really means there's probably 100 to 200 unique data sets for each one of the instructors. Okay, not a big deal. Hard drive space these days is pretty cheap. It's pretty easy to get those application or those data sets on there. They said 300 stations. That's not actually a big deal either. You know, 300 machines to actually install applications on might be a little bit challenging. We'll show you how Frame actually goes out and solves the problem. Thousands of users. Uh, thousands of users isn't really a huge challenge, except it's actually the user that's actually the problem. How are they going to use the applications? How are they going to use Frame? What do we have to think about? You know, are they power users that really understand Windows really well? Or are they somebody that doesn't know computers very well? So even though it's thousands of users, really the, the psychology and the person that we have to think about. 40 plus applications, okay, that can be challenging in Windows. Do they work together? Do you have to worry about conflicts? Can they run at the same time? You know, that's a potential challenge that we had to think about. The other thing that they had as a constraint was I wasn't allowed to change the way the applications ran. These people that are coming to the training session, they know the applications they use on a day-to-day -day basis. We can't change them the way they run on frame. They have to run the same way that they run on their local desktop machine. And the biggest challenge of all, they really have one guy to do all of this work. Install all the applications, make sure they're running on all the machines, make sure they're working properly, collect all the data sets. That's a lot of work for a single person. So ultimately where Frame comes in is we, we can help solve this problem. So first step, AutoCAD or Autodesk put all of the applications in one place and we installed them on one virtual machine in the cloud. Second, we picked an infrastructure. So we have to pick the types of uh, systems that this is gonna run on. And what I heard from Autodesk was we have a lot of power hungry applications. We need lots of cores, we need lots of RAM, we need a pretty powerful GPU to run those applications. So we chose Microsoft Azure as the infrastructure that we're gonna run it on. We needed ways for people to actually uh, log in. Uh, we actually have a complete uh, uh, authentication system. It manages users, it manages their access, it manages when they can get in there, passwords, logins, everything. No, no work required on that part. And then files. And we, we took a pretty simple solution here. We just attached a network share put all the files there. So any student that logs in, they could just grab a file 
and put it on the virtual machine and use it for their class. The most important part is we really only set up one base system with all the applications configured the way they need it to be. And with one button click, we're able to deploy it to all 300 machines up there in the training class. So thinking about the solution that they had in previous years where they had to go and touch each individual system to install each individual application and update each individual uh, system, we made it the solution much, much easier. So ultimately, today we are the exclusive provider of all the cloud-based workstations for AU for both the self-based and also the hands-on labs. This is what the user sees. Uh, just talk a little bit about the experience. They sit down at the desk, the instructor's at the front, they get presented what we call the launch pad. And the launch pad today is really simple for Autodesk University. We're giving people access to a full Windows desktop. But if necessary, we could choose Paul here to have just AutoCAD and Yoper over there to have both AutoCAD and Revit. We can decide what applications are available to the user. So it's really easy to configure what applications are available for a particular user. And with a single button click, they're launched right into the virtual machine in the desktop. So you can see in the background, we're running Google Chrome. Pretty much any computer with a browser and an internet connection can run those big, heavy applications, regardless of the type of system that they have. So I think in that booth over there, we're using a Chrome box. It's like a $100 machine from, from, uh, from Best Buy. You know, we've run it on uh, thin clients. We've run it on tablets, MacBooks. I think over here we have a MacBook Air. So those are the types of systems that really can't run those big power hungry applications like Revit. But now what users get is they get the applications they know and love, but delivered in the way that they want. Imagine you're you know, working on a project, you gotta go home, you gotta you know, feed the kid, you gotta work with the wife, you gotta do some stuff at home. Boss calls and says, hey, I really need you to work on that file tonight. It's like, well, I didn't bring my laptop home with me. No big deal with Frame, you just log in, you have access to the application and the files. And that's pretty much the advantage here at Autodesk University. And just to touch base real quick on why we chose Azure, um, I don't know if James is here. We are gonna have one of our uh, Auto, uh, Azure representatives here to talk a little bit more about it. But there's really three reasons I chose uh, working with the guys at Azure. One, super powerful systems. Uh, we chose, they call it an NV6, we call it a Pro 56 gigabyte. Six core, the latest and greatest NVIDIA, or Intel GPU, or CPUs. 56 gigs of RAM and a M60 8 gig GPU, pretty powerful. Um, and that can actually scale up if we needed to. The next level up has two GPUs and 12 cores. Uh, the one at the very top has four GPUs, 24 cores and 224 gigs of RAM. So depending on what application you need that day, you can scale up and scale down depending on what you need. Uh, the second thing is they're everywhere. So we were here in Vegas, we needed to make sure that those virtual machines were within a reasonable distance so that we could have a really good user experience. No big deal, they have one uh, in Texas, really close, gives a really good user experience. And as a partner, um, it's really important for these types of events to be able to pick up the phone and call somebody if you have a problem. Um, these guys were always uh, just a phone call away. So ultimately, hands-on labs, if you go up there, there's 300 machines. Uh, I had actually uh, an instructor say, can you show me which one's the local machine and which one's the virtual machine? Because from a performance perspective, I can't tell the difference. And it's really easy because one of them doesn't have any Revit and all those applications installed and one does. But from an experience perspective, what we're hearing from all the students is, hey, I didn't have to install anything. I didn't have to configure anything. The data sets were all there. This has been an awesome experience for me. And for the Autodesk people, the fact that they installed in one place and were able to deploy it to all the systems really saved them a lot amount of time. So with that, that's pretty much everything about the hands-on labs, and I'm here to take any questions that people might have. So I saw you nodding in the back about the, the horsepower. You must have a problem where you need a little bit of horsepower for your system every once in a while. Seemingly and always, uh, I think I, I work with a lot of engineering firms and they all complain about that at some level or another. Yeah, and with Frame, the nice thing is it's really just a button click away to scale up the system that you're using or scale down, depending on what you need to do that particular day. So you, uh, infrastructure is Azure, but you didn't have to. I mean, could the, could the customer actually install it themselves and host it themselves, or would you always put it into a cloud service? Uh... That's a really good question. So today, one of the big parts of Frame is we are multi-cloud. So we chose Azure for this. We also can use AWS. 
We're going to have Google Cloud support. And in the near future, the plan is to also support what I would call a, a private installation. So if you have an existing hardware that you just need a better management layer on top, we'll have that uh, in the near term. Actually, we opened an office in Washington, D.C. to start um, really working with the federal government. And the first thing that, we're gonna, that we did was move from just using the public cloud to using all the government clouds. So that adds FedRAMP and ITAR and those types of things. We also are running in C2S, which is Amazon's uh, CIA cloud. And then near future, we'll have also deployments that can be run on their own. AWS. Today, no right. data centers ourselves. You know, the goal here is that with using public cloud, using Azure and AWS, we leave it to the experts to manage uh, the infrastructure. You guys don't have to own the hardware. We don't have to own the hardware. We let somebody really manage what needs to be built out to support, you know, many people worldwide. Any other questions for Jared? Wonderful. I'll be right over. What capabilities do you have to manage usage so that you can see what users are doing and then get it reported back? Yeah, that's a really good question. So we have a pretty rich set of analytics. So every, we call it a session, every session a user logs in, we track what applications they use, when they used it, how long they used it, we can even track a lot of the metrics around user experience, like what was the frame rate, what was the network connection, did this person have a good experience or not. Um, we also have the ability to do all that through API. So somebody that wants to do really, really deep analytics on user's usage and those types of things, they can output it to like a Power BI or something along those lines. In addition to that, we also have a layer above that that's um, like a user management, user subscription metering system. So for example, we have customers using Frame for trials. So for a trial, you want to control maybe the certain number of days and certain number of hours that they have access before they had to pick up the phone and uh, maybe call the sales rep and get a, a top up, if you want to call it that. So we can always add that additional layer for metering. And we've had a lot of customers use our API to basically build their own custom workflows to add that type of metering. So for example, we have one customer, the user comes in, they sign up via email, they get access for four hours. After that four hours is expired, they get an email, they have to provide a little bit more information, they get topped up. So you can add a whole bunch of metering on top of it using a lot of different tools. Any other questions? Is there every downtime? Well, that's a good question. Uh, we are sitting on top of the public cloud that doesn't give us 100% uh, availability, but um, you know, I always challenge people to go take a look at our status IO, IO page. We've had a few outages, some of them are not controlled by us. Uh, I think people might remember earlier this year, Netflix, basically the whole internet was down because of a problem at AWS. We'll be affected by those types of things, but at the same time, they're few and far between, and we built a lot of systems for redundancy. How many, how many minutes uh, data lost would you have? Like, are you, we used AWS, and we develop our own cloud through AWS? But uh, if it if it breaks down, we usually lose about 15 minutes. So what's your what's your guarantee on a guarantee is you know 99.6 uptime. So you know you're not going to lose any data. You know I would I would think that there wouldn't be a lot of chance of lo losing data. Maybe good to understand what you ran into before, and I can talk to you a little bit more about the things that we have in place to try and prevent those things. We understand the data, you know, and the architecture, engineering, construction is super important. And if people are don't have access to the tools, they're basically sitting there doing nothing. So we've done a lot to make sure that it's 100% there. Okay, Wonderful, as, any other questions? I was going to ask one question. How many people are users that have actually gone to one of the hands-ons? Nobody, okay. Well, you should go up there, sneak in there. We also have access here in the booth if you guys want to try it out. So just let us know, we can show you a little bit more. Okay, thanks for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give Jared a wonderful round of applause for that very informative presentation. Jared, thank thanks you, so Casey. much. And thank you all for joining us.